Welcome to this video about using OpenID Connect to secure our Blazor WebAssembly applications. I have created a new standalone Blazor WebAssembly application. So if you are in Visual Studio, you see a creation dialog where you are provided with different options. You can create an ASP.NET Core hosted application. You can create also one that has identity server. We are using the demo identity server. So the team that builds identity server have a little demo identity server that is free to use and we use it as our uh, secure token service or identity provider however you want to call it first we have to install a package and here it is microsoft asp in a core components WebAssembly authentication this is going to hide most of the stuff to get a token store it and then also send it because we want to call a protected API. So here in the index.html file, we have to include the script that this package is delivering. It is called such, so content, and then the name of the package that we just installed. So here in program, I am going to configure the whole thing services at o idc authentication i configure it using a statement lambda provider options the authority will be the bespoken Demo server identity. Now on this website, you will also see uh, the, all the available uh, configurations and all the available uh, client IDs. Now, like in a real world example, but yeah, you will know it. You would have to uh, register your applications. Like if you use a uh, Azure Active Directory, yeah, of course, you would need to register your applications uh, there first to get the ID and stuff. So uh, response type will be code. And then because we also want to call an API that lies on this uh, server that is protected, we have to ask for this um, for this piece of information, or, yeah, for the scope. That's why I'm adding here app scope, and then here also email and profile. Now here we are not finished yet because we also want to configure it in such a way that the token gets automatically attached to the request headers when we are making a request to the predefined URLs, like in this case, the identity server uh, API. So I call it custom authentication message handler, and it is going to inherit or extend the authorization message handler. We have to import a namespace. And now here we have to define a constructor that is going to expect two uh, yeah, arguments or parameters. So the uh, iAccess token provider and the navigation manager. And then we have to pass these, these two arguments also to the base constructor. So that's that. And then in here we can call the configure handler method and pass in uh, an enumerable of string. And that's just the base address of the URI that whenever we call, call it, we want the token to be attached automatically. Now, okay, that's great. Now here we have to uh, register it.
here I'm adding a client. I just call it the uh, yeah, API. And I'm setting the base address. To new URI. Oh, I just see here. Then don't need that. We can delete this. So new URI here again. This one here. And then I can call at HTTP message handler and pass in or custom yeah, message handler. So what Okay, so to make this method work, we have to install another NuGet package. And it is called Microsoft Extensions.http. Uh, Microsoft Extensions HTTP. Yes. Okay. So what this does here, we are registering an IHTTP client builder, but we want a concrete type of the HTTP client. So we are going to call at scoped this time. Now SP is the service uh, provider. So the I service pro uh, yeah, provider, so with all the services. So we can just call uh, get required service, pass in or I HTTP client factory and of course it's a method and then here we can create a client and here we just pass in at the api um, so that it knows which client uh, it has to to create and then here that's the last thing we need to do is add our custom authentication message handler so we are finished in the program CS file. Now let's go into our main layout. Here we are enclosing this with the authorized view. So if the user is authorized, we are just going to display his or her name. And we are also providing a way for uh, him or her to log out. Let's style it in red. Here, of course, we need to define this uh, logout method. Now, to make this all work, we have to to make it work, we have to import this namespace so that we then can inject a sign out ses session manager or which we can uh, sign the user out. And then also inject here a navigation manager so that we then can Wait, no, we don't really need one because we are on the, uh, yeah, okay, doch. we need one. And we navigate here to authentication logout. Now, of course, we uh, first need to build this uh, page. So. Okay, so let's build a new Razor component.
and call it authentication. Now, this component is a bit, uh, yeah, let's say, the heart of the whole authentication flow. We make it routable, authentication, and then here we are going to uh, yeah, expect some sort of action. So how did I, okay, yeah, log out. Okay, so in here, again, we are going to use the Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly namespace. And then here we are going to use the remote authenticator view. And here the action we are going to pass in our action. So like this component, uh, for example, if we arrive here with a login, this component is redirecting us to the identity server with the predefined, uh, like with the working uh, URI. So it is like, yeah, it's, it's doing all the hard stuff for us. So it's making the redirects to the identity server as we have configured it in the program. So now let's go into our fetch data component. And I just marked the whole component with the authorize attribute. To make this work, I have to import a namespace uh, ASP echo of authorization. So, and let's go, let's just get rid out rid of these weather forecasts. Now here again, authorize view. And what I'm doing in here is just a uh, uh, enumerating over all the user uh, claims. Value and the type. Great. So now we uh, also at some point want to call our uh, protected API. I'm just going to delete this too. And because the video is, uh, is a bit longer anyways, I'm just leaving the response in the string and we are going to display it, but we are not, uh, again, like deserializing it in any meaningful type. So response equals await, get async, and here the API test. And then string, response, content, and then read a string async. So I think there is only one thing missing. In the app component, we have to change this to the authorize route view. Ah. So let's have a look. Okay, where are they? Okay, that's quite a funny error. Or yeah, I've never thought that this uh, is actually enforced, but uh, they have to be capital case, the name of the components. Okay, it starts up now authorizing and we shouldn't be authorized. Uh, okay, I, it took quite some time, but here not authorized because we have authorized the whole eraser component, counter and home. Okay, but I don't see the login. Oh, okay, yeah, I completely forgot to make the login in the nav menu. So back to the nav menu. Now here we have to, ah, not in the nav menu, main layout main layout. I'm sorry for the uh, confusion. Now here, of course, we also have to check if the user is not authorized, which is which means uh, not authenticated in this case, because we haven't uh, registered any policies. 
we are redirecting uh, him or her to the authentication uh, page or yeah, component and passing here this uh, login. So now it should work. Oh. Here I have to log in. So. Okay, still authorizing, fetch data. Okay, uh, I uh, honestly don't know how, why it takes that long to authorize. Maybe it is, I have misconfigured it. This would, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think uh, I have misconfigured the whole thing. So that's why it takes that long because otherwise uh, it shouldn't take that long. So here, email, app, email, profile. Ah, oh, yeah. It is not app, it is API, of course. Okay, so here, not authorized, log in. Now, here you're getting redirected to the identity server with all the the, uh, the necessary stuff up in here that's doing the, uh, the remote authenticator view is doing this for us. Now, here you see we can either do it with Bob or with Alice. Uh, I'm choosing Alice. Log in. Okay, here, this works. We go to fetch data. And now this works too. So these are Alice's claims. And this is the response from the protected uh, API. Now let's just quickly go into our browser tabs. First, I want you to show the session storage. So here we have, uh, yeah, here we have two things. Here we have like the configuration that is stored for us. So the scopes, the post, logout, redirect, URI, the client ID, and the authority. And here, that's where our uh, actual information is stored. So here you see the access token, and that's the token that is getting, uh, that got automatically sent to the API. So if I go to network, and I'm just going to reload fetch data here, we see we make two requests. Uh, the first one is, okay, so options, this, uh, this request has to come uh, from the framework just to like, yeah, uh, from or yeah, and uh, then here we see the authorization header bearer and the token got automatically attached because we have configured it uh, in such a way. So uh, hopefully I've shown you how we can transform a standalone Blazor WebAssembly uh, application to uh, to an application that interacts with an uh, identity provider over the OpenID Connect uh, protocol, but. I just, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I completely forgot you couldn't see a thing because I I hit it. Okay, so here in the session storage. Now, in here, the configuration is stored. So the authority, client ID, the scopes, redirect, URI. And here the information about the user. The access token is here. And yeah, I just have to redo everything. But maybe you've seen it the first time. When we make a request, we see that the access that the JWT token is getting attached or chart token, you can, yeah. Some people call it chart, some JWT, but I think chart is like the thing that everybody calls. So that's a chart token. And exactly, I want to show you one more thing. That's our logout button. If I click it, this information up here should get uh, deleted. Let's have a look. Okay, we are getting redirected, then clicking here. Okay, you are logged out because I'm on the, the fetch data component. And in here we have seen the uh, user, the user thing and the chart token and stuff uh, got deleted. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.